uh, hey Eric, um, what are you what are you doing there? Oh, hey, hey Nick. Hey, uh, what do you mean? What am I doing here? Well, Isn't it obvious? I'm I'm Kubernetesing. Uh, seriously, that's not how you Kubernetes. What do you mean that's not how you Kubernetes? It's that's what I've been seeing. Oh. Online. Oh. No, no, that, I mean, that, well, if you're kubernetes you're definitely not doing it right. But luckily for you, on this episode of HashiCraft, we're going to show you how to Kubernetes. So we, we better head over to the studio, dude. I think. Um, uh, uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. It looks like you've done some decorating. This is looking pretty nice, Eric. It's better than the old studio. Yeah. I've been building this with Barry, <laughs> who's in the control room. Oh. Hey, Barry. Hey, Barry. All right. So let's begin. So what we're going to do in this episode is we're going to look at how you Kubernetes. And by that, we, we're going to look at how we can build well, a Minecraft server on Kubernetes because, well, it's always going to be Minecraft and it's always going to be Kubernetes, right? So, so what we're going to do is we're going to run Kubernetes with K3S. And K3S is a, a lightweight version of Kubernetes. It's completely API compatible, but it runs as a kind of a standalone Docker API. So there's nothing really to install. To kind of get this all working and just get it to run in, in Docker, well, we can use K3D. And K3D is super nice. It, it kind of is a, is a little command line tool, just wraps up with K3S and makes installing and running Kubernetes on Docker very, very easily. There's, there's kind of a, a couple of other options, which I kind of want to point out because, you know, there is Kind, which is the, the official sort of tool for running Kubernetes in Docker. And it, it's a really nice tool as well. So definitely check these out. We'll put the links below. But for That's now, a lot of case. It's well, it's it's a lot of case. It's it's more. It's, it's it's yes. So how are we gonna do this? So let's let's have a look first. Let's get our Kubernetes cluster up and running. So to run a very basic cluster with K3D, what we're gonna do is we're going to use the simple command K3D, and we're gonna do create cluster, and I'm going to give it a name. And there you go, you can see that that has created a cluster. So if I look inside of Docker, and I've got a Docker container there, right? Nice cool. and easy. So what I can do with K3Ds, I can interact with this Kubernetes in Docker using my Kubernetes control file. So Kubernetes, kubectl, not kubectl, kubectl, remember that folks. So we, we can do <laughs> get nodes. So there's just a simple command and we're gonna see how many nodes are running in this Kubernetes cluster. And there we go, right? So using the standard kubectl control um, and we're using kube k3s with Rancher in Docker. That's yeah. very cool, Nick. Cause so basically we're running a different version of Kubernetes, but it just behaves and acts like any other Kubernetes cluster would, right? right? We can use any of the Kubernetes commands, I assume. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's API compatible. Now, the, the, the really nice thing about this is that um, let's just do k3d delete. And I've just deleted that um, that cluster, wow. right? That's fast. It's fast. So if I trash it and I want to create another one, there we go. And it's running again. So that, that literally is taking seconds to create those clusters, which is, which is really cool. Wow. So now we, we've got the cluster. What we need to do is to create what's called a Kubernetes deployment. And a Kubernetes deployment allows us to run our application. Okay. So if you if you take a look at the documentation, we're going to look over here at the, the, the Kubernetes docs, and we can have a look at a deployment. So what a deployment is, a deployment manages a thing called a pod. And a pod is a collection of Docker containers. So you can have multiple instances of these pods and they're kind of encapsulated by this, this deployment. And the, the, the manifest or the kind of the document that defines a deployment looks like this. So it's defined in YAML and you just sort of doing API versions. So that's kind of the apps v1. Kind is the deployment. What, what is this document or this resource defining? And then we've got some names such as metadata um, and the app labels, and we can specify the specification. So this is like the definition of the actual pod itself. So we're saying we want three of them. And the selector, so it's going to 
create three engine axes. And so we go is this like a sort of blueprint for what will actually be spun up replica times? Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. And, and it's kind of, um, it, it's a pretty straightforward document. But um, okay. there's, there's a little bit of hierarchy and it can be a little bit confusing at first, but, but it kind of gets a little bit easier. Let's, um, let, let's see how we would build this up for Minecraft. So again, what we're going to do is we're going to create that kind of top level stuff. Right? And here we go. So we're going to do a deployment. And this time we're calling it Minecraft deployment. And our app label sort of metadata we're setting as Minecraft. So then we get into the specification. So let's have a look. So we're going to create the, the spec and we're going to just say one. We only want one Minecraft server. And the selector... Well, we might want two later because, you know, Barry. Well, we, yeah, I mean, we, yeah, we probably want to create a, a server specifically for Barry. But we, we, we're just going to do one for the moment. And we're going to do match labels and app Minecraft. So this is going to be the template that I want to match. So let me define that right now. So next layer. There we go. So I've got to make sure that the indentation is, is correct. That's one of the, the, the beauties of, uh, of YAML. But we, we will get that right. So we've got the, the template there, and I'm setting the, the labels app match, and that's going to match my selector up there. Um, gosh, I'm forgetting. Um, Are you forgetting how to YAML? I've completely, completely forgot how to YAML. Anyway. It's okay. Just use spaces. <laughs> Tabs, I heard. Anyway, we um the, the kind of the next step is we want to start defining our container. So our container is going to be the work that we want to run. And that goes into this spec section. Spec is is aligned with metadata there. Okay. So we're going to define a container. We're going to define the container called Minecraft. And then we specify the image. So we're using good old HashiCraft image. Yeah, so that's the same as we were running on Nomad and on uh, container instance, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's exactly the same. And that's kind cool. of one of the nice things about using Docker containers, very portable across all of these different workloads. Um, so we, we've got um, the container port. So we're using the Minecraft port, which is 25565. And that is literally just this, this Docker hub here. So we will, we'll, again, we'll put all of these links for you in the links below. But what's next? Well, what we want to do is we, we kind of, we need to set some environment variables because if you, if you kind of take a look over here, we need to do some things like, well, we want to kind of set the environment variable, which will load the, the predefined world. And we want to disable the whitelist because we're just running this as a dev cluster. We're, we're not too worried about those things. So to do those in Kubernetes, what I can do is I specify a another block here, and this is called environment or env. So it, again, is kind of sitting on this level. So you can see these kind of sub-levels for containers. I'm specifying the name, the image, the ports, which I can specify multiple, and then environment. So these are environments that will be, or environment variables that will be available inside the container then? That's right, yeah. So it's exactly the same okay. way as when we were just setting the environment variables on the, the sort of the, the Docker container itself, or when we were specifying those in Nomad in the uh, previous episode and links for that below. Okay, but, that makes sense. So we do that. And um, we also need a second environment variable. So we're going to kind of disable the whitelist. And we're going to kind of do that there. So we're going to specify whitelist enabled, and we're setting that to false. Yeah, that's been the bane of our existence, the whitelist. Yeah, especially when we lose the state, right? So we're going to um, we're going to set all of that up. So what we want to do now is we want to to apply that um, that configuration. So we need to kind of set to be able to use kubectl the, the thing that we need to do is we need to be able to set the the kube config path so the kube config is the a file which kind of contains all of the connection information and the security information like the certificates and things like that for your kubernetes cluster and k3ds will automatically be able to kind of export one of those for me and i use that with this k3d get kube config command so here nice. what i'm doing 
is just setting an environment variable and then using a subshell onto K3D, like so. Oopsie, so you don't have to create one yourself then? No, it, it's all like nice and easy there. So oh. now I can do this, um, this kubectl get pods. We've got nothing running. So now, well, let's um, apply our Minecraft server. kubectl apply dash f minecraft.yaml. So I'm using the apply command to apply my configuration file dash f to point to a file and then the file itself. And you can see there it's now said that the deployment has been created. So let's take a quick is Look. Is that it? Are we, are we done? We're nearly done. So you can okay. see there that um, the pod is getting created. So Kubernetes is going to be downloading the pod from our Docker registry, and it's going to be setting it up. And there we go. You can see it's running. Now we can get some information on this. So let's have a look at the logs. We can do kubectl, and we can do logs, and then the name of the deployment. And you can see there we've got all of the logs. We see all of the Minecraft logs and the server is up and running. Now, the thing nice. is, the server is up and running, but it's not accessible because we we need to be able to expose that container port. And because we're using K3D and K3S, inside of Docker, well, the port is it needs to go to the Kubernetes server in Docker and then from the Kubernetes to the actual application. So let's take this one step at a time. So we're basically having a Docker container that we need a port into running in another Docker container that we need a port into. Right. There's a couple of layers of indirection there and, and that's unavoidable, but it's not massively painful. So first things okay. first, what we need to do is we need to expose a way to that actual deployment to get to the container from within Kubernetes. And to do that, we're going to use this Kubernetes construct here called service. So, so that's one of those different uh, config types that you were specifying before that we can choose for kind. That's right. And, and Kubernetes is kind of made up of all of these different resource types. There's, there's things like service and then there's configuration maps. You can do things like stateful sets, which allow you to kind of have um, disks and volumes, which kind of follow your applications. There's, there's a kind okay. of a, a, a huge amount of stuff and, and it's all available in the documentation, but it, it follows this sort of convention every time. So we're specifying nice. this, we're setting up some metadata and then we define the spec. So we are creating a port and we're calling it Minecraft and we're specifying that it's going to be uh, 30,001 and then that's node port. So what that means is this service is going to be available on port 30,001 on the node. So the, the, the kind of Kubernetes being a multi-clustered application, you have multiple nodes. This is going to create a service and it's going to open port 30,001 on that node. And that port is then going to be directed towards our application running on 255.65 TCP. So we're setting up our first layer of port forwarding. So if I was on my K3D mode node, I'd be able to go from 3001 into the application container. Okay, kind of like a, a proxy in a way. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's pretty pretty straightforward like that. So okay. then to, to apply that, we can use exactly the same thing again. We're just going to use that kubectl apply. And it, it's, it's the same command, but you'll see now, if you look at my screen there, that, well, I haven't changed the deployment, but Kubernetes has realized that I've now created this service. And if, okay. we, if we kind of do the, some kubectl magic again, kubectl get svc, you can see there that I now have this Minecraft service, which is a node port service, and it is running port 3000 and 30001, which points to a container on 2565, which is cool. Okay. Right. So we are nearly there. But the problem is, if I go to Minecraft, and I try to connect to my local service, well, it's not going to work. It's failing, and the connection is refused. And the reason for that is because I'm running Kubernetes in Docker. So if I look at Docker PS here, you'll see that the only port that's open to my Kubernetes node is the Kubernetes API server on 6443. That's not going to work. It's not going to work. But 
when I created my server, what I did was I used this command, right? K3D create cluster Minecraft. Now, what I can do is I can run that command again, and I'm just going to specify a port. So let, let's have a look at that. But first, let's just destroy that. K3D delete, and I'm going to delete my old cluster. All so right. then I'm going to do K3D create cluster Minecraft port, the local port that I want to open on my host, which is 25565, and the remote yeah. port into the node, which is 3001, because that's... So that's the, that node port we defined. That's the node port that we defined, and we run that. Okay, so that's running. And now, if I look in here, you can see I've now got those two ports open. So K3D is now running in Docker, but it's got 6443 and 2565, which Minecraft's going to expect. So let's just run... Okay our Minecraft server again. So cool. Don't forget to export your uh, config, Nick. Oh, yeah, my, my config, right. Uh, let's do that. I'm going to, you know, I was going to forget to get that. Oh, yeah, no. you were totally going to do that. I, I saw it. Yeah, it was going to happen. Kube, CTL, apply, dash F, dash, dash F. My, mine, wow, my, mine, my, wow, yeah. There we go. So, yeah, we got it. Watch CTL get pods. So there we go. So that container is now creating. That's going to take just a second. I know why you were making those typos, Nick. It's because Barry's standing on the computer. He probably just hit some keys. I blame Larry, Barry completely for this sort of stuff. But the, the, the application is now running. So if I go back over to my Minecraft, and I just hit that. And now you can see, there we go. I've connected and I'm now wow. running Minecraft in Minecraft in Docker, in Kubernetes, in Docker. Is that wow. enough layers of indirection for you? Yeah, that, that is enough layers, definitely. Well, I think um, that's it. I mean, for this episode, we're, we're all done. I'm, I hope that uh, folks have found that kind of kind of interesting because, um, well, I mean, it's, you know, we, we're showing this as a kind of a, a very simple example, but there's a lot more you can do with this. Now you've got your Kubernetes development environment. You can run whatever you want. And K3D, super quick, super simple, and kind of just really, really easy. I'm, I'm kind of, um, I'm kind of impressed. Yeah. Like, I'm surprised it, it was this easy. Yeah, exactly. And uh, we will see you next time. So don't forget, like and subscribe. See you next time. Tune in next time for more fun-filled adventures on HashiCraft. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and smash that bell button. To be honest, it's from the public good. We've got to keep these two clowns busy somehow. So Kelsey Hightower was joking and saying you shouldn't run your blog on Kubernetes, but he never said anything about running Minecraft. I think we might have just one-upped him there. Yeah, we really showed him. Huh. <laughs>